Welcome everybody to another episode of Unlocked. We're here at Trapdoor and we're here with the crew of RoomEscapeArtist.com, a few friends and some staff of Trapdoor. Um, so uh, David, you had an awesome topic that you wanted to do an Unlocked video on. Why don't you tell us about it? Last time around we poked fun at bad players and this time we're going to talk about bad game masters because fair is fair. Ah, gotta hit the other end. Alright, we're in trouble. Especially you, Dana. She's the worst. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible so, room master. <laughs> I mean, as a game master, we brief the people. They're introduced to the rules, to what they have to do throughout the game. Um, they go in, and at that point, we have to monitor them and make sure that they're following the rules and that you know they don't get caught up on things for too long and keep the game flow moving and... Um, you know, watch the game, be the game master. So what makes a bad one? Uh, biggest one is racists. Racists? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's, oh that's, yeah, I have to credit um, the, the folks from Room Escape Divas, the podcast. Um, this is actually one of their experiences. But yeah, they've, they've had people come in and like mock them because they weren't good at math and they're Asian. I know, I saw it. You know what your problem was? No Asians in your group. What? Am I right? <laughs> was I just yeah. racist for laughing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think Dana, so. have you ever mocked someone for... Never. Oh my goodness, <laughs> never, no. So they actually made a joke about them being... I, I don't remember the whole story, but yeah, they, 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 they were um, pretty perturbed. Ah, uh, yeah, the sexual harasser. So, excuse me, when my phone not out. But, yeah, the sexual harasser. Um, usually, dude, it's always a dude. Um, going in and like asking players for their numbers or just being generally creepy. Wow. I don't think one of ours has ever done that, but I know one who might. If they have <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's not someone at the table. <laughs> <laughs> So, go in, get a number, take somebody, you know, to the back room, into the hidden room, and see how the night goes, right? I mean, it's a, it's a surefire plan, right? Where could it go wrong? Who wouldn't? Give you an extra clue. <laughs> I don't know, I was receiving text messages throughout the entire thing. <laughs> Just saying. So I think the worst type of game master is the disciplinarian who busts in and they, they start yelling at you and they say you're breaking this and you're, you're destroying that and oh my god don't do that and a lot of times it's uh, for stuff they haven't even told you not to do so you know what we do when we go in is we turn the room over we take out drawers we pull things down and if you haven't told us not to do that we're gonna do it anyway and then a lot of times they see how we play and they say oh crap they're tearing my room apart and they tend to get a little agitated and they come in we should check all of these You know, once in a while we have to ring the biohazard alarm, yeah. and it tends to stop oh, people yeah, in their exactly. tracks. Yeah. <laughs> it tends to stop people in their tracks, and, and that's good. So I, I'd, I'd say that's a good recommendation to yeah. escape companies is, you know, have some kind of you are breaking the rules alarm and so that someone scared. doesn't have to go in and disrupt the whole thing. Um, the overworked, this is, uh, this is one of our favorites. So one of the one of the more awkward things is when you go to a company and they have one person game mastering multiple games, three or four of them, and they're just way too overworked. They, you know, they're they're constantly dashing between getting game, you know, teams out of the game, teams into the game. You ask for a hint, there's a massive time delay because, you know, they're busy. I know, I just figured that out. Thank you for the hint. 
I was helping. You know, I often wonder, like, what happens, because, you know, here we've only got the one game in the building, but at our new location, there'll be multiple. So, you know, I often wonder, like, what happens if that perfect storm happens? And you schedule three people, but one of them no-shows, and, I don't know, whatever happens where somebody else is late or can't, you know, for whatever reason, then you get a situation, and there's one person left to run that, and then they have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, what happens in that scenario? And um, it's something I've never come up with a contingency plan for, uh, because I can't really think of one. But, um, you know, I mean, Dana, you run a lot of games here at Trapdoor. Um, you know, how would you feel about handling, you know, that scenario? Is that is it an overwork scenario if you had to run more than one game? Would it, you know, would it, would you be comfortable running more than one game without screwing up? You know, honestly, I feel like I can multitask, so that wouldn't be a problem. Two I could handle, three I feel like would be a little much. What if there were games with kids? <sighs> That's when you bring out the liquor. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of times it depends on the team. Yeah. You know, if you have two teams or, or three teams going along really well, mm -hmm. not needing a lot of hints, not breaking stuff, exactly. not being a problem, yeah. can be really easy because I'm sure you game master games where you just do nothing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. It, you know, if you have three of those going on at once, like, fine. But you can't count on it working out right. that way. Well, there's the judge, and usually when you're playing a game, you feel like your game master is on your side. Sometimes you feel like your game master is rooting against you, which isn't the worst thing, except when your game master starts judging you. Um, in one experience, we solved a game and we shattered their record, and the game master came running up the stairs, which was also even funnier because she was wearing a knee brace, and busted into our room and started accusing us of cheating and checking all the locks to see if we had actually opened everything. What are you guys doing? This is too fast. We had to have skipped something. We broke the record. What did you skip? Nothing. had to skip something. If you were watching the game, you'd know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the yeah. camera was broken yeah. in that yeah. movie. And I'm yeah. so they couldn't even see If something was wrong, then you guys still won because that's on them to make sure everything's put out. Yeah. yeah so. and, and then the last one is uh, game masters who don't know their own games. Yeah, and we had one of those yesterday. Sorry, guys. Time's up. Oh, man. This, the computer's not working. Yeah, how do you work this? I can't get the keyboard to come up. Oh. We read the directions. We tried all of these things. No, how do you Try. do it? Let me go get my computer. You don't know how to run your own filter. What the? Yeah, I mean, she did not know her game. She, she just didn't know how to operate anything she, in her game. Yeah, she didn't know her game. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, this lock, can you show us how to do this lock? Nope, she had never opened it before. And, I mean, a win is a win either way, yeah. but... Um, we won fairly. But it was it was really bizarrely deflating. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we think of anything else? How about game masters that aren't really in it? Like they're like they're not passionate about it. That's always mm -hmm. been a big thing for me. Yeah. Sure. Um, now, when we say not really in it, I mean, are are we talking about they're just not paying attention to the board? Like you see them behind the desk, they're on their cell phone, they're just clearly not even paying attention. I see it's it. just you know. a job. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, I don't, I don't think we're going to get it. Guys, we're, we're stuck. We need a hand. All right. We need a hand. Can we have a hand? Hands. Yeah, we always have games where it's kind of like, okay, during this game, I can check, you know, the booking software and see if something's going on, stuff like, because they'll be really super well behaved and they just get the concept and they're good players. And then sometimes you have teams come in like, um, you know, like roomescapeartist.com and you just have to watch everything they do because you never know when they're going to open something up or, you know, find a leftover piece of garbage in a corner, buy containers, and try to reach for it. For seven to ten minutes. Um, Sometimes we just have to mark our territory. <laughs> so, 
Thank you again, RoomEscapeArtist.com. If you need any reviews, which we always recommend checking out reviews before you go see and play any escape room. We ourselves, as escape room game masters, we always check their stuff before we play other people's games. Um, and we kind of always recommend it because certain things might you know, be different tastes for you that are different tastes for her and for him and so forth. And it kind of points out what you should look for and you know, um, what rooms kind of fit what you're looking for, I guess mm -hmm. might be the better way to put it. Um, so thank you guys so much for putting together the review site and uh, keeping everything you know, honest and um, so that we always know where, you know where to go and what to check out. Um, so thank you for joining us for another episode of Unlocked and hopefully Game Masters everywhere will pay attention to this video and learn some things. <laughs> Thanks guys, be sure to subscribe and check out our videos.